Hi everyone, welcome to Come Home. I'm Jen Mallon and it's so wonderful to be with you today in your home, in your car, on your computer, on your device, in a hospital, in a prison cell. I don't know where you are, but God does. And it's such a joy to be with you. I promise you're going to be glad that you decided to watch today's program. So what are you having today? Are you having coffee? Are you having latte, espresso, hot tea, Dr. Pepper, uh, water straight up, water on the rocks? Um, or did you hit the drive through this morning and get some uh, St. Arbucks, as our friend Graham Cook calls it? Well, whatever it is um, and whatever your pleasure is, my friend, just fill your cup and expect a blessing from God today. The word says that daily, he loads us up with benefits. Um, I'm not kidding. Today is a special day. God is good. And I come to you every time we do a program because I want to inspire you. I want you to be lifted higher in the things of God. And my guest today, uh, Pastor Bobby Petroselli, is known for his ability to share the truly great news that often um, that we often call the good news without considering how altogether wonderful and good it really is. So he has a powerful testimony. He's really no stranger to this network, but if you haven't heard it before, it's going to touch you. Every time I tell it or I share it, uh, it it's riveting and um, really such an example that God can take what the enemy meant for bad and truly change it to good. But what will hold your attention is just the way that he has taken his testimony, which he did not want, and it has gone far reaching. It's a powerful outreach ministry. It is captured in his book, uh, You Matter, and uh, it doesn't. And I can't wait for him to share what the it is that he's referring to in this book and remind us that Jesus came to earth and gave his life and his death to prove to us that Jesus is the way, the truth, and the life. And he meant it when he said, John 10, 10, one of my favorite scriptures is that I've come that they may have life and they may have it more abundantly, a rich and satisfying life. So let's compare the it that Jesus came to give us with the it that Pastor Bobby Petroselli is gonna tell us about. This knowledge could really be a life changer for you and in your situation today. So I'll let him tell you all about it on today's episode of Come Home with me, Jen Mallon, which starts right after this short but very important message. I love Dr. Michelle Carell. She is a powerful woman of God on the West Coast that is just stomping the ground and has been for over four decades. She's gonna share with us the power of Sabbath, the feast of Sabbath, and then we'll be right back in the living room. Thank you so much, Jen. I am so excited about these teachings on the biblical feasts. This feast today that we are going to share is about the Sabbath. The Sabbath itself, through the scripture is actually considered a feast. Let us see what the Sabbath really represents. Let us look at the personal, powerful, prophetic meaning of the Sabbath in our own lives. First of all, we need to see that the Leviticus version of the biblical feasts is given to us in segments of seven. First we have, let's look, Leviticus chapter 23, verse 3. Six days shall work be done, but in the seventh, seventh is a Sabbath, a holy convocation, and you will do no work therein. It is the Sabbath of the Lord in all of your dwellings. What does that mean? Now this is actually given before all the other biblical feasts are listed. Then we see in verse six of Leviticus 23, we see Passover, which is a feast of seven days. Then we see in verse 15, the feast of weeks, which is a feast of seven weeks. Then in verse 24, we see Rosh Hashanah, the first day of the seventh month, which is a feast in the first day of the seventh month. Then we see Feast of Tabernacles, which is a feast of seven days in the seventh month. Notice the biblical feasts I have just mentioned are sevens, seven days, the seven weeks, the seventh month, or beloved saints, 
we also see the seventh month, the seven days of the seventh month, which is Feast of Tabernacles. So what is the spiritual significance of the Sabbath? I want you to understand that the Sabbath is much more than just stopping and resting, although I don't want to minimize that. There is another kind of rest that the Bible teaches us about that we have access to through the blood of Jesus. And the person that actually is the first person in the Bible that teaches us about this type of rest is someone you would never expect. It is Moses, but it is actually Pharaoh who is speaking to Moses. In the slavery narrative, he uses the word Shabbat. This is the second time in all of the Bible where we see the word Shabbat or Sabbath used. The first place we see the Sabbath used is in the creation story. And we see this in Genesis chapter 2, where it says, God rested in the seventh day, and in the seventh day, God ended all the work that he had made. But we see in the Exodus narrative a different, more profound meaning on rest. We find this, beloved saints, found for us in Exodus chapter 5. Notice what Moses says to Pharaoh. He says, Thus saith the Lord God of hosts, Let my people go, that they may hold a feast to me in the wilderness. And Pharaoh said, Who is the Lord? I will not obey his voice, neither will I let Israel go. I know not the Lord, neither will I let Israel go. And they said, meaning Moses and Aaron, The God of the Hebrews has met with us. Let us go, we pray. Now I want you to know that in Exodus chapter 5, we see the constant repetitive sentence, Let us go, or let them go, which is a prophetic prefiguring of being loosed from shackles, of being loosed from bondage. And we see that the symbol of the Sabbath for the second time in scripture is actually mentioned here. The Bible says in verse 5 of Exodus 5, the one who speaks the word Sabbath for the second time in the Bible is Pharaoh. And he says, and Pharaoh said, the people of the land are many and you, Moses, make them rest from their labors. What does it mean to rest from their labors? Pharaoh did not want God's people to rest. What kind of rest? Rest from bondage, rest from sorrow, rest from the slavery, the slavery-like slavery experience that a Pharaoh in our life gives us. You see, beloved saints, we see here, we see, and it shall come to pass in that day that the Lord will give you rest from your sorrow, from your fear, and from your hard bondage wherein you were made to serve. The real Shabbat means to have yokes broken. The real Shabbat means to be freed from a Pharaoh. The real Shabbat means to rise up, take up your bed and walk in some type of bondage that you have been involved in, just as we see the second time that it is used in God's word, that we see the word Sabbath used. God wants to give you rest right now. Rest from your sorrow, rest from your bondage, rest from your hardship, that rest that only Jesus can give when he said, come unto me, all ye that labor and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. Hi, I'm Jen Mallon with Come Home. I'm sure you've registered for our Beauty for Ashes retreat coming up March 31st through April 2nd. Come be with us at this very special experience with the Lord. Bring everything broken in your life and everything that needs healing and God's gonna meet you there. We're gonna have a great time. Register today at jenmallon.com. I'll see you at Beauty for Ashes. Dr. Michelle Corral is truly an icon. She is legendary. She's a woman of God. I really honor her. 
and I love when she sends life hacks in, so I'm sure you loved it too. But I'm so excited today because I get to meet with someone from my tribe, an Italian, um, and we, you know that means that I, we either we're going to interrupt each other a lot, <laughs> or I can sit back and he'll talk the whole time, and you know Italians, and our hands will be flinging everywhere. Maybe you, it's you know, you just can't help it, but. Uh, he is no stranger to this station. He is a staple here, and he comes and he shares um, his story. It's powerful. Not only here does he do that, but he is a speaker. He is an author. Uh, he is an educator. He is a counselor, a therapist, and he is also an associate pastor. And so he is really um, doing it all for Jesus Christ. And he has a powerful message, a simple message, a profound message. And so without further ado, I welcome Pastor Bobby Petroselli. <laughs> Thanks, Jen. Good to see you. Hey, just so you know, us Italians talk with our hands I know. for one reason. Why? We spit when we talk. We try to catch all the <laughs> spit before it hits everybody. I know. I've had to really work on that. Exactly. You know? yeah. See, well, with, we all do. with guys, it's more acceptable. With girls, it's I just it. not lady. I get it. Yeah. But, you know, when it happens, I just say, it's okay. It's anointed. You and, know, Jesus you spit go. on people. Amen. We're really laying hands right, on people in a, right. in a distant way. <laughs> yes. Well, um... It's been a long time since I've been with you. You know, you and my husband used to, you know, speak in a lot of public schools and do a lot with youth together. And uh, I was so familiar with your first book, um, 10 Seconds Can Change Your Life Forever, right? Or 10 Absolutely. Seconds Can Change Your Life. Well, the first one was Triumph Over Tragedy, 10 Seconds Can Change Your Life Forever, was like a continuance. Got you. I updated the first yes. book. Okay. Yes, okay. absolutely. Well, I, I've been with them all. The 10 second, I, I love how you put that piece together, but just for those who may not know, maybe they're tuned in for the first time, can you just share um, a little bit about your testimony and story? Absolutely. Uh, and then we'll go into this new project and, Absolutely. and the revelation from that. So first of all, the way 10 seconds came is, life does not happen one day at a time. No. Life happens one moment, one choice, one decision, one action, one reaction at a time. Yeah. If we had one day to live life, It'd be totally different. Yeah. We only have this precise moment right yeah. now. Well, literally, my life was changed in one moment when over 30 years ago, a drunk driver crashed through my house in Texas. I was from New York, met my wife in Oklahoma, moved to Texas, and my wife was tragically killed. I ended up in the dining room window, and there's a full-size pickup truck in my house, and the man driving the truck was a drunk driver. My life was changed forever in one moment. She was killed. She suffocated under the truck. I was run over completely, had rubber burned in my body from the truck, the rubber you see on the highways. Um, I had my tongue sticking through my cheek, almost lost a side, forehead, back of my head. I was just all banged up. But the reality I tell people all the time, God doesn't send evil. He doesn't send tragedy. He doesn't send bad. Okay, the enemy comes to steal, to kill, and to destroy, mm -hmm. as you were even saying, but God's come to give abundant life. Mm -hmm. God's desire is to always take bad, and turn it into good. Yes. That's his desire. So literally, for the last 30 years, I've been speaking full-time. I went back to teaching and coaching, but I started speaking full-time because I was getting so many requests and literally been speaking full-time since 1993. And I've literally spoken, no exaggeration, I say this honored, more than 7,000 times in 30 years. Praise God. Because the first 15 years, I was speaking 250 to 300 times a year. And I loved it, mostly to educational groups. And what inspired me was I was already a teacher, coach, counselor. And the day I buried my wife, the kids at the school, all 1,200 students, teachers, mm. coaches, counselors, administrators, on a school day, except the principal, by law, he had to stay at the school because it was a school day, official school day, yeah. showed up at the church and the cemetery. And when I went back in the hospital for 23 days, they took over my hospital 24 hours a day, seven days a week, and their actions screamed out two words, you matter, you matter, coach, and we're not going to let you give up. So that's God's message to this world, that people matter, yeah. no matter what they've been through. And here's a simple reality of my message more than ever today, Jen, is this. I share it with people all the time. I was sharing it with some of the people behind the scenes here at this wonderful ministry. And I said, I don't know where the church world goes after sin and behavior first. Right. Bear with me. We don't condone it. Right. 
But the reality is Jesus said it's the sick that need a physician. You're going after their behavior. I'm not condoning it, but I know why they're doing it. Every person watching, including me and you, somewhere in life has been hurt, wounded, rejected, broken, uh, felt unloved, unaccepted, unincluded, unimportant, felt we didn't matter. Well, the reality is Jesus, when I ask people all the time, what's the gospel of Jesus Christ? He came to forgive me of my sins. That's part of the gospel. That's not the whole gospel. He came to heal my broken heart. I want to get to the root of it. I was bruised for your iniquities. Bruising is internal bleeding. Okay. He was also wounded for my transgressions. That's my sins. The chastisement of our peace was upon him. He wore a crown of thorns to deal with our mindset, our mental health, our mental condition, and by his stripes were healed. Those are four distinct things he did. That makes the full gospel. And I always say to people, if Jesus just came to die for my sins, why would God send him when a sacrificial lamb was doing that? But a sacrificial lamb didn't get beaten and scourged, right. didn't get a crown of thorns put on its head, did not have to carry a cross, did not get nailed to a cross, did not have a spear stuck in its side, right. did not get whipped and beaten and scourged. Curse because that. Jesus encompassed the full capacity yeah. of everything you and I would go through. Yeah. So to everybody watching, my heart is to them that Jesus came yeah. to heal your broken heart. Yeah. And the number one thing God showed me, which will bring revival to this world, is going after heart conditions first. That's right. Healing the broken heart. Number two is the power of the Holy Spirit. Yeah. I hear the most amazing testimonies. I don't say this arrogantly. I hear the most amazing sermons preached. But here's the reality, Jen. Apart from the Holy Spirit, I can't do nothing, nothing. of God. It's impossible. And here's where we complicate it. Everything in this world is one of two things. Everything you feel, think, do, say, act, react, choose to do, how you live, how you don't live is one of two things. You're either of the spirit or you're of the flesh. And it's simple. The more I'm in the spirit, the better I'm going to do. The less I'm in the spirit, the worse I'm going to do. It's that simple. So let me show you an analogy God gave me. So let's say from this moment forward, you're never, ever allowed to be with your husband in person. Hmm. Or you're never allowed to even talk to him, even on the phone. The only way you could correspond with him is through voicemail, text message, or email. What kind of relationship are you going to have with your husband if that's all you can have for the rest of your life with him on this earth? Not so good. Not so good. Well, guess what? I hate to say this arrogantly. I believe majority of the church, that's their relationship with God. Yeah. They read the Bible. Important. Okay. They go to church. They do a Christian ministry or they do an outreach or they do a Bible study. They're part of these things. But the reality is they don't know what it means to be still and know that I'm the Lord. So watch how vital the Holy Spirit is. Most people, this blows them away. This is what God revealed to me recently. Jen, they say the average man speaks 7,000 words a day. <laughs> the average woman, 20,000. Bobby Petroselli, 27,000. Yes, 40. You know. <laughs> but, but here's the deal. If you break it down, simple. Let's say Jesus just spoke 7,000 words a day. That's all he spoke. Okay? This shows the magnitude of the, the enormousness and the value of the written word. Bear with me. If he just spoke 7,000 words a day, not more, right. in three and a half years of ministry, he spoke 9 million words. Do you know how many words we have recorded in the Bible? 31,500 of Jesus. That's not even 1% of every word Jesus spoke. That's why John 14, 26 is vital. That everything that Jesus spoke when he was on the earth, the Holy Spirit will somehow empower us, reveal it, and show it to us. Yeah. We get a small portion. And here's what I say to people. How desperate we need the Holy Spirit. And don't get me wrong, the written word is vital. It's yeah. amazing. But it's a simple outline. And here's what I say. If you take the entire earth, that represents God, Jesus, and the Holy Spirit. Of course, I'm not giving true credence, but the entire earth, right? right? The written word of showing us who that God is, is the city of Clearwater, Florida, in the entire earth. That's how small to the vastness and the greatness. It's an outline and how powerful it is. Could you imagine if we really plug into greater work shall you do because I go to the yeah, Father? That's right. Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. Well, it's like... Um, it, it's very much, you know, the te Holy Spirit teaches us all things. He brings all things to our uh, remembrance. And like the Queen of Sheba said, but half has not been told, you know, Absolutely. but when we be still and know that he's God, yada, intimacy, abiding, 
you know, Jesus said, I pray that you, you would be one with my father the way that he and I are one, but you don't have oneness without time, without being still, without intimacy, without wanting and yearning to know the more, to know, I just don't want Clearwater, Florida. I want it all. Exactly. I want the world. And that's the Holy Spirit. Yeah. So watch this. I teach about the bummer sheep. Okay. Every once in a while, a baby lamb is born. Okay. That the mother rejects it. The biggest fear of every human on this earth is the fear of rejection. Yeah. Nobody wants to be rejected. It's true. Okay. So the baby lamb is rejected. The shepherd keeps on trying to bring it back to the mother. She keeps on rejecting it. Finally, the shepherd brings the baby lamb in the house, raises it himself, and brings it back to the mother. The mother receives it because it's been healed, it's been restored, mm. it's been resurrected. You know what just happened to that baby lamb? It got born again because it got restored to who it was created to be. But here's the vital key. When the shepherd comes to the flock and calls to the flock, the very first sheep that run to the shepherd are the bummer sheep. The bummer you know sheep. why? They know the voice, voice of the one who yeah. healed, delivered, restored, yeah. and resurrected them. Yeah. That's the key. That most of the world, most of the church world, has not been truly healed. That's why the words, and I don't say this arrogantly, the word says, take up your cross daily and follow me. Yeah. Crucify the flesh daily. Because daily my brokenness and my heart, my flesh wants to rear its ugly head yes. and get in the way. And that voice wants to come in and tell me, you don't matter, Bobby, you're not good enough. And I use this simple analogy when I'm in a high school, I pick on a young lady. And she say, 18 year old senior. And I said, let's pretend I'm an 18 year old senior and I have a massive crush on you. You know what my biggest fear is? Being rejected, rejected by you. So you know what I'm willing to do? I'm willing to even go down the wrong path just to get your attention and acceptance because for the temporary moment, I can pat myself on the back and go, wow, she's paying attention to me yeah. even just for this moment because I desperately want to feel that I fit in and yeah. I'm important and I matter. Yeah, and, and we see that. We, I mean, that is common. Everybody can relate to that because whether it's in a high school environment, in a work environment, in a family environment, in a church environment, our flesh wants to belong and to feel like we matter. And to feel like we fit in. And, and as you were mentioning earlier, here's the key. We matter. Well, the reality is the it that tries to define us. And here's what I came up with years ago. Our brokenness chases after us to define us. Mm. Wherever we were initially broken in life, yeah. that it tries to control us. Well, that's not who we are. No. It's what happened to us. And the number one thing I even get from students in America is they'll say this after the assembly, Jen, is they go, Bobby, wow. Before today, I thought it was my fault yeah, that. That's true. And they look at what happened to them or how they were treated. And the number one it is a family issue. Of course. Where things didn't work out in their family. Why did my grandmother have to raise me? Why did my parents yeah. have to split up? What did I do wrong? Why do I have to go through this? Mm -hmm. And automatically, I try to show them it's not who you are. It's what happened to what you. Happened to but you. this doesn't have to define the rest of your that's life. That's true. Bobby, this is so good, and I want us to, um, I want you to share a little bit more, but right, and I want you to pray. Um, but before we close our, our show today with just a personal word um, from you or prayer, um, let's go very quickly to this very special re retreat spot. Hi, I'm Jen Mallon with Come Home. I'm sure you've registered for our Beauty for Ashes retreat coming up March 31st through April 2nd. Come be with us at this very special experience with the Lord. Bring everything broken in your life and everything that needs healing and God's gonna meet you there. We're gonna have a great time. Register today at jenmallon.com. I'll see you at Beauty for Ashes. So if the idea of coming to a retreat where you can get that love and validation that you matter to God, then Beauty for Ashes is for you. So pray about it, consider it, go to jenmellon.com to register. Okay, so Pastor Bobby, you wrote this incredible book, You Matter, It Doesn't, Leaving Your It Behind. And it's a great read. It's a short read. It's, it's, I love all the quotes in the back. You can go, um, people can get it on your website. 
BobbyPetroselli.org. But BobbyPetroselli.com. Dot com. Ten Seconds.org. They can find it there. I'm on Facebook. I'm on those areas. Of Amazon. Media. Yeah, Amazon. YouTube. They can get it. Absolutely. Yes. In fact, I watched one of your messages the other day on YouTube. It was re it was really good. Um, so, but I want to give you an opportunity. Share what VIP is, and then I just want you to minister. I Absolutely. Minister. Absolutely. VIP I came up with stands for value, identity, purpose. <laughs> when people know they have value. In other words, Jen, I'm not put in this earth to be you. You're not put in this earth to be me. But both of us are part of the team, yeah. part of the tribe yeah. of God's kingdom. But here's the key I try to say to people. Not everybody on the same team in a pro sports plays the same position, That's the right. same height, the same weight. But they're all part of the same common goal. So either you're part of the kingdom or against the kingdom. Yeah. And everybody, when they realize their value and what they bring to the table that nobody else can bring to the table, they have an identity and a purpose that nobody else has. And the greatest travesty is when people don't live out who they've been put on this earth to live out. Wow. And that's the simple yeah. reality. And to all those tuned in, let me show you this very simple shirt because I wanted to show that to Jen. Because we want everybody to know how much they matter. Yes. The reality is you matter so much to God. You are treasured and valued yes. by God. God wouldn't send his son to die for a piece of junk. The word of God says as clear as day that Jesus is a friend that sticks closer than a brother. Well, here's what I want to throw out to you. Why do we make our conversation with God so formal? Come be transparent. Share your heart. Talk to him like he's right here on this earth, which he is living in you through the Holy Spirit. He wants to have those conversations with you. He knows what you're going through. He's already there. He's constantly, as Revelations 3.20 says, he stands at the door and knock. Sometimes we pray and ask God to show up and God goes, what are you talking about? I'm already knocking at the door. So you know, my thoughts and prayer for everybody out there is this, is that you would be sensitive to the Holy Spirit, yes. that in every area of your life, you would hear the voice and know what it looks like to open that door and allow the Holy Spirit to come in and have <laughs> dominion and rule and reign in your life because you matter so much to God. That's why God sent his son to die for you. You matter so much to him that he wouldn't send his son to die for a piece of junk. He wouldn't spend money on junk like you wouldn't. So in the name of Jesus, I speak to everybody out there now. Be healed, delivered, restored from your heart to your mind, to your soul, to your body. In the mighty name of Jesus, with thanksgiving we pray. Amen. Amen. Woo! I got saved on Christian television and she was not, she didn't have that much authority. She was very, you know, quiet. It still worked though. <laughs> no, it did. And Amen. I believe people have been saved and healed and delivered. Um, and if not, go to Bob, bobbypetroselli.com. Get this book. If you have a young person in your life, get this for them. If you just need to be encouraged, grab it. If you are in this area, go to the St. Pete Vineyard. St. Pete Vineyard. Uh, uh, pastor Bobby is an associate pastor there, but follow him, like him, support him. Thank you for being part of Come Home today. I pray you got saved. Support this program, support this network, support this ministry. God's good. My name's Jen Mallon, and I'm inviting you to come home. <laughs>